So in today's video, we were supposed to be talking about how to go and build raised metal garden beds, but I messed them up. So we changed the title of this video and we're changing the way this is going. And we're going to talk about eight things you should not do, or maybe you should do instead of what I did in building raised metal garden beds. Look at how many there are of these wing nuts and spurs. Okay. So I spent like a whole day, whole day building these things. This has taken like six hours of work to come back and one, only one of them's built right. I think it's that one. That one has problems and that one has to be rebuilt. So clearly I just, I really, I feel like I got an A plus on all the different ways I could mess this up. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Oh, I just want to be done with having them built so I can start filling them and actually planting things because that's not really what I wanted to be doing was spending a whole entire day building these, these beds. So yes. Okay. So let's start with my eight tips of things I should have done instead. Start with why is bed one not, not together, right? Well, really it comes down to the fact that tip one, read the instructions. Like don't, read the instructions, like read the instructions. Don't be like me. Don't just skim through it and be like, yeah, I kind of, I, I got it. I got the gist of it. Cause here's the issue here. This is a three by six bed. And logically, what does that mean? Each of these panels is three feet. That's what I thought, but apparently that's not quite right. I don't know what the actual sizes are, but these two panels are actually shorter than these other, I don't know if I can point to the right direction, these other four. And I put them on the wrong side. And I didn't realize that until I was building that bed, that that was even the case. I just basically, well, you'll see, like I just flipped open the box and I was like, yeah, there you go. There you go. Of course, logically, they're all the same. Just put them together and boom, bing, bang, done. So if one, read your instructions, make sure you actually understand, are the parts the same? Are there differences? Yes. I don't think you need to spend a ton of time on this, but actually do it because now I'm gonna have to take this bed back apart to, because, because you can see these cross spaces. I was like, why will they not fit? And the reason I spent over a half an hour just trying to figure out why they would not, they weren't even close going across until I built and then, yeah. And I might've caught the fact that this was supposed to be a different size if I would have been counting my parts and matching it against the instructions. I also started to realize that I had extras and I was short some of these in some of the different boxes. So, before you get into the middle of it and then all of a sudden you're realizing, right? Like I did that one box was actually short, um, one of the, the bolt screws and others had some extra wing nets and some extras. Like I could have gotten ahead of the problem instead of being like half done and then it's a little hot mess. So what I think I did well later in the whole thing is I started counting these out and I started realizing that everything was in sets of eight. So then I started counting out in eights, which made my life easier as I was building later on. So count your parts, make sure you have everything before you have a half built garden bed in your yard. You know, it was also a terrible idea when I built that first bed is I built it on the mulch, like dealing with an unlevel surface and then trying to get all these little holes to match up did not go very well. So if you're building a raised garden bed, like find a nice flat surface, like whether it's a sidewalk or you want to do it on your driveway, like pick something like that. It will make your life way easier than screwing around 
trying to get things to line up when your mulch isn't actually yet level or your grass or your wherever. Cause these weren't that bad, especially with another person to move. Another thing, so when you're dealing with like these galvanized corrugate, corrugated metal raised beds, um, the edges of those are not like perfectly smooth. Like they're not gonna like chop your hand off, but they're not smooth. And as I was twisting all those wing nuts, my nails were just catching and catching and my knuckles and the amount of cuts I got on my hand. And well, all my nails were longer actually. <laughs> um, about half of them got cut off just by the raised garden bed. So wear gloves. Gloves would have been really handy to wear. Don't, don't do the Floridian thing and do like the flip flops and the no gloves like I have a strong tendency of doing. Protect your hands. But yeah, the next day I definitely had so many tiny cuts all over my hands. Ooh, did they sting. Now, as I was going along, you know, putting it together, especially with, because they had wing nuts, I, it wasn't that bad to do it by hand. Where it became more of a challenge is when I messed up. Having a power screwdriver would have made my life a lot easier. And actually, as I go to correct some of these beds today, I brought out the power screwdriver, got it charged up so that it's ready to go so that we can just take this thing apart because it just, it takes so, it takes so long. It took so long. I think each of these beds took about two hours. The fastest I think I got one done with help from Ben was an hour 45, but then we didn't even finish it. Hour and a half, maybe, maybe. It was tiring. It was a really long day. Okay, so what tip number are we on? And I feel like I'd combine a few. I think we're on tip number okay well whatever so tip number seven if i would have been smart ahead of time i would have marked there there's a sprinklers somewhere in the ground like here i have no idea where they are so now i gotta go digging through to try to figure out and i don't know if i want to count that as a mulch problem or this but a lot of times if you have those in-ground sprinklers that get nice and low I have one spot over there, even when we had grass, like it was so hard to find that sprinkler unless you had them on. So mark your sprinkler heads beforehand. Cause then if you put the garden bed there and it's under like two feet of mulch and dirt and all the good stuff in there, like you're not getting your sprinkler working. So do that ahead of time too. And then tip number eight, it's what I should have done from the beginning. I should have done it during a time when Ben could help me. And I saw this on the reviews. It is way easier if you have a friend or a significant other or somebody to help you make these things. Building them by yourself, besides the fact that it's really hard just to move and maneuver stuff around, they can be super heavy. It's also just really tedious on a time consuming long day. Having a friend there makes life easier, makes it nicer so that you can, you know, like it's not just your project, it's like our project. Yeah. Now we gotta go fix some of these beds. So we'll do that. We're gonna do that, we're gonna fix that. And we gotta move Mr. Christmas Reindeer because actually, these are supposed to be in a row and yes. So it's correcting time. So let's go do that. But in these beds you'll notice things like this, whether you buy this brand or you get a different brand. And really what these are for is as the dirt pushes out, these, I almost think of them like a string. Because I saw some complaints on Amazon with find this that people were like, oh, they're so flimsy. They're not meant to do anything this direction. Almost think of it like a rope or a string. If you were holding a string across and there wasn't any like pull on it, like it's not holding anything, it's not doing anything. This is job is as the dirt pushes this out, these pull back in. So it's all about tensile strength. If you did any like static sports.
And now that we've got these sort of filled up with some of the fire brush clippings, next week what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fill up these with relatively low cost. So make sure you don't miss that. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications, new videos each week. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.